everybody. Good morning. It is Jean here. Jean True Love from True Love Quilts for You coming from very sunny Pennsylvania. Um, I've had a little bit of a cold last week. Nothing, nothing serious, just a streaming, just a streaming head cold. So um, my voice is just a bit scratchy. You must, ex you must excuse me. Um, the last video I did, I had, I was, um, for my quilt, my sampler quilt, I was um, constructing the backing, if you remember. I'm really getting back a little bit more slowly back into sewing after my move, so, but I figure I have to finish this project. But before I pin based this quilt together on my little table here, my little island, um, I just wanted to share with you guys my ladder. Um, if you remember when we were constructing my, um, my sewing room, my, our sewing studio, as Ian calls it, um, the splurge was this rolling ladder. Now, my husband um, and I took last week, um, it took us about seven hours to actually put this together. Beautifully constructed, um, engineered I should say, beautifully, but it really did take a lot of screwing and gluing the rails and all of the lovely fittings that it has on it. However, um, because we had gotten, um, the, the kit comes with an eight foot rail that it rolls on on the top. We had to put together, splice together two eight foot rails for my 16 foot section here. And inadvertently, I didn't realize you had to order the four brackets came with the original rail, I forgot to order the other four brackets to hold the rail up. Um, my, my ladder does slide and we have worked it. So, ta -da! so it does slide, but we're, we're not wanting to put pressure on this side here. It does slide, obviously. There's the, there's the join here and it goes all the way to the end but we're not, we're waiting till Monday. I believe I have to go pick up the other, uh, the other four brackets so it can go all the way to the end. And then of course we have a stop there. Um, my husband and I have been up it on this end here. I feel like Belle of <laughs> Beauty and the Beast. Um, it's really an extravagant uh, add to my, uh, my beautiful room. But again, one that um, we treated ourselves to. So there's my rolling ladder, folks. And when it's when it's all when it's all completely constructed, um, it'll be wonderful. Now, before again I get into pin basting, hopefully I can do it. <laughs> this is a little table, right? I was saying last week that I had a huge, great big dining room table and my other cutting table, which has my other sewing machines on it. Um, so I'm going to think. Everybody, you know, I, I'm, I belong to a few Facebook groups, and they're like, "How do you, how do you um, base the quilt on a small table?" And people say, "Ping pong tables, folding tables," which is an awesome idea. I do have some folding tables outside. I don't feel like getting them, so I'm going to attempt. It's a large, say a twin. I, I would say a twin size quilt. I, I don't know the, or a large, very large throw quilt. Um, it's not like a queen size quilt, although I think once I get to it, the, the, uh, the method will be the same. I think that's what's going to come in the next few minutes. But I just wanted to tell you again, oh, oh, um, last, the, my last video, I was struggling so bad with this, everything slipping off my little table here, right? So what did I do? I went and I got my handy dandy, what are they, five pound? Oh, I'm out of shape. Uh, my little five pound weights. Um, that that obviously now my fabric's not going to slip. Somebody said um, weights um, or um, a gallon of milk or a gallon of water or something, but I got my weights. So I think this will help an awfully lot um, with my holding my fabric together. I think that's to come in the next few minutes. And then another thing before I go to my quilt is um, people ask me a lot of time, what batting do I use? And um, what I, what for the most part, for the most part, if I could afford it, um, I would always use wool. I would always use a wool batting. Um, they're expensive and cannot be bought by the bolt. I think you have to buy them. I've only used it about three times in a special quilt. Um, 
by the package and they are it, it is an expensive way to buy it is an expensive batting but to my mind the absolute best and the absolute I think ultimate um, way to quilt a quilt old-fashioned warm toasty and you see the stitches like incredibly um, would be a thinner batting two layers of one thin batting which this is not a thinner batting cotton batting and then a wool on top and I do real I do know that a lot of um, long arm quilters or professional quilt uh, um, more like um, uh, art masterpiece quilts use a wool batting because when you quilt it you'll get a lot you'll get them this the quilting stitches are much defined the quilting area is much more defined than a flat cotton batting batting to my mind well sorry batting people but has gotten so much thinner and so much more expensive when I started quilting, say about 15 years ago, I could get a night, I won't name the company, well I will name the company because it was warm and natural and it was wonderful stuff and I could get it for about $7.99 a yard for the whole 90 inches. Now, I don't have to tell you how much it is, it's, it's expensive and to my mind, maybe I'm, maybe I'm unusual, but to my mind it's much thinner. But I liked warm and natural, I've tried quilters, dream quilters, puff, awesome, awesome, uh, I like Quilter's Dream. Again, it's a little bit more expensive, but I also have found that I like um, warm and plush. Now, warm and plush is not as, as readily available in stores, I, I think. I don't know. Maybe, maybe uh, lo your local quilt shop will have it, but I find warm and plush, which is from the Warm Company, which makes warm and natural. Warm and plush is what they say thicker it's a 100 percent cotton batting but it's to my mind and i will say this it's what warm and natural used to be it's what the warm and natural used to be it's a really lovely thicker nice cottony soft draping um batting that i can only get from amazon by roll and if you look, I'm, I'm not quite sure again, I should have done my research, sorry. I just put my camera up on um, how much it is. But if you look up on Amazon, um, this is much, this is more expensive for, I think it's a 20 or uh, 15 yard bolt because it is thicker. I think you can get warm and natural 25 yards. Again, don't quote me on that. But warm and plush, again, to me is what warm and natural used to be. But you're going to pay a premium for it. But I like it and I think, well... If you do your, you know, you do your quilts, um, I don't know, I don't know what the quilting industry is doing, pricing us out of, out of house and home, right, for our hobby. I, when I started quilt fabrics, I could get fabrics for $4 a yard, $5 a yard, really good stuff for $7 a yard. And you poor people in Australia and Canada, oh my word, oh my, and England, oh my word, I keep, these horror stories, like, $25 a meter or something. I, I don't know how you do it because as you know quilting takes a tremendous amount of fabric. Hence my collection of fabric which I have not gone fabric shopping except for a few bits here and there in the last two years, um, maybe three years um, because I have so much. I've been collecting it and it's funny a lot of people are like well you know I have this huge stash um, but I've, I've, I, I've uh, gotten sick of it Personally, I haven't. I like pretty much 99% of everything I've ever bought, whether it was 20 years ago or 10 years ago or 5 years ago. I like my stuff. So I have pulled, my, I have pulled stuff from there. Because I do other sewing other than, than this, other quilting, little things. Um, but this is, this, this is big, my YouTube thing. So anyway, that's just a few bits. I'm going to cut my batting. Um, oh, and what I do is I measure my batting. And this is, this is interesting. Oh, my handy dandy scissor drawer here. So I've got my scissors. Um, what I do is I'll get my tape measure. And, oh, that's, this, is a, this is a smaller one. That's a smaller one. But um, I, I need my long one. I'll just measure this. And again, I add about six inches, maybe five inches from the top to the measurement of my quilt top. If you remember, that's how I measured my backing. I, I went, when I'm smoothing and smoothing and smoothing out from the center, my quilt top does stretch. 
and the worst thing is to have you like oh oh you're this you have this much batting at the top so I allow a good five five inches to six inches at the top of my batting and at the bottom of my batting so I'll I'll measure my top and I'll just unroll this and what I do is I just go right down and I find this I find a roll of batting lasts me a long time it really does and then I do I do, I'll, I'll show you how I, um, I'll save the other bits. I make rag quilts and I save all my batting. And I also piece my batting together, my leftover batting pieces, I piece together with, it's called a heat and bond, a heat, a heat press tape. Again, I get it on iron, uh, Amazon, it's about $5, 5 or $6 for yards. And, and it's just a, a, a very, very thin tape that you iron on and your batting stays together. It's awesome, I don't have, I used to whip stitch it together, I used to zigzag it, the tape, iron it, it's done. So I'm gonna cut my batting and I'll, I'll come back here <laughs> and figure out um, how I'm gonna pin baste on my small table. I think I can do it. Here I am on my table. I've, I have my three pieces, my backing, my batting, and my quilt top. And I've cut this um, to there, so I'm just going to put these aside. I have my little, my, my little stools here. I'll put that right there. Now, um, as I showed you last week, I, I, um, bat, I uh, made the center se seam on my, my quilt, Hope, trying to pattern match it. I think I did a good job. Can you see it? Can you see the seam? Just a little bit of a joggle, but it's fine. So again, I, I, it, it's not directional, but it sort of is. I want the roses going up, so I'm doing it this way. So I'm just gonna uh, put my batting on my table like this. And I'm going to put it pretty much even all the way around with the center seam in the middle of my small table here. And I have that up that much there. And I need to shift it slightly. About that much there, just eyeballing it. About there, yeah, like that. And then, and then I'm going to. Oh, let me see. I sh I should use my handy dandy tape measure. <laughs> oh, I wanted to look all professional. It's a pain in the neck. <laughs> oh my goodness. And um, yeah, maybe I'll use my handy dandy tape measure. <laughs> so I have about 15 inches there, and. A 14 so there you go so there you go forget that so anyway then I have this all nice and centered I think yeah it's pretty good I press that very well and then my batting I'm gonna I'm going to just find I'm just gonna find um the center of my batting get rid of any little threads now there is a, a school of thought of like what side what side of the batting do you use and there's like, oh, what is that thing? Pimples up, dimples down, or something. I don't know. This batting, it does have two sides. Um, it says a real soft outer side, and this is a little, a little rougher, but not rough. But is it dimples or pimples? I don't know. So I, when I do this batting, what I do is I just use it with the roll, with the fold like it would be on the fabric. This is the, this is the right side. The fa and the, um, I want to do the, I want to do the, um, I want to do the wrong side down. So I think this is the, the, the side that's folded is the right side. Okay. So what I do is again, I will, this is on the length. I will find that fold that came right off of my bolt and I will put that fold onto my center seam. So then I know that the um, 90 inches wide batting doesn't matter how how um, wide my quilt top is. Of course, if I had a quilt top that's bigger than 90 inches, um, I would find the center of that. But I but the center of this quilt top is just down the one back seam. So I will f I will put that. Um, they're pretty much the same length about I did it about 95 inches so I'm just sort of feeling and eyeballing that center that um folded center line down the folded center line of my quilt backing 
Now, a lot of people are like, oh, I got tucks and puckers. I rarely, rarely, rarely ever, ever get tucks and pu puckers on the, my back, my backing, because when I've done this on any table, any size table, um, I just continually pull and stretch gently the backing and then allow the, I allow the weight, I allow the weight, excuse me, of my fabric to pull any puckers, excuse me here, <laughs> pull any, any puckers or folds or tucks down. The weight of my fabric is just pulling um, anything down. So that's pretty much, that's pretty much the same size or the same uh, depth down. And I can sort of, I can almost feel, I can almost feel that there's no puckers on the back of my quilt here. And I'll do the exact same thing here. Oh, it's funny, I don't need my weights because this is, this is sticking. <laughs> so again, if you remember my lovely sampler quilt, I have three hearts, and I just go that that's the top and that's the bottom. Again, with your sampler quilt, if you're not bothered, okay, so this is the, uh, yeah, this is the top over here. If you're not bothered, you can, you can put it any way around. And of course, if you don't have a directional backing. So, and what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to find <clears throat> our quilt sampler was six blocks across, seven blocks down. It was 42 blocks. So the middle of my sampler block is, <clears throat> excuse me, is um, one, two, three, one, two, three, is exactly this center sashing. One, two, three blocks, one, two, three blocks. So I want to eyeball that center sashing, this sashing right down the middle of my quilt. I want to sort of eyeball that to that fold. And then, because I've allowed for five or six inches on the top, I want to allow that on, on this bit here. So I've eyeballed this center sashing here, which is the center of my quilt, and I'm just going to come over here, mess about, and I can see that this center sashing is right on that fold, which again, which underneath it is the back center seam. And again, if you can see, I err on the cautious side. Hopefully you can see this. I err on the cautious side. There is that bit of, well, I have a lot more backing, but there is that bit of batting. Um, at, oh, no, no, no. I have to, oh, no, I have to shift it. So uh, yeah, so there you go. I, I have a, I have to put a little bit more up this way, just a little bit more because my backing wasn't quite to the end. So I'll figure this one out. My backing, my batting is a little bit bigger. So there's my backing. There you go. I'll just shift it up slightly. Anyway, I'm sure you other you quilters know how to do this. I'm I'm not. You know, if you're new or newer or trying to figure it out, this is how I do it. <laughs> it's just a bit of messing about until you get, until you get your fabric all nice and even. So I'm not going to waste my time. I'm going to even this out and then I'll come back and just show you how I pin baste it. So after much smoothing and making sure I have enough on that side and that's, I know I have enough on the sides. But the top and the bottom are important that I have enough. I just, I have been collecting again for many, many years. I have used my sewing, uh, my, my uh, large safety pins. You can get uh, curved safety pins. I don't use curved safety pins. These are just regular, regular safety pins. Um, I, have, I have it down. I pretty much do this. Um, I, I take a handful and I will start. I will start grabbing, I will start at the exact center, which is pretty much right here. And I will secure my, my three layers. I put my pins on a quilt like this. I will put them, say, 
um, every five inches or so. I believe the general rule of thumb is 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 a is a fist a fist thing apart. I do it about an inch bigger than that or so. Um, I, I, every quilt is different. Every quilt is different. Um, I will secure like I'm pretty sure this is a this is a nice firm cotton um, as are all my quilts. But I may put maybe two in the block each block and then um, on, on the, along the sashing. So that's that's how I that's how I pin based. Um, again, these are not specialty safety pins. They are larger safety pins. Um, what are they? Two inch, inch and a half, two inch, two inch, I believe, two inch safety pins. Um, again, I got them, well, I've been getting them for years. Um, uh, you know, a hundred here, a hundred there, a hundred there. Now, the maybe the disadvantage of using safety pins is, because um, there's many, me many methods of, of basting, um, and this is what I do, is your quilt obviously will become heavier because you're, you're having, you know, you're having all of this metal in, in the quilt. Um, I don't fret about that because I personally um, have my table um, for my, for, for uh, the um, support. I have a table, as you know, I have a table behind me. I have a table to the side of me. If my quilt gets too heavy, if, or I was doing a much larger quilt, I will set up my ironing board or maybe another small folding table right next to me. So the weight of my quilt, if perhaps I was doing a queen or a king size quilt, to quilt it, um, is the weight of it is taken up by my table and the majority is not in my lap. But if you people are sewing with your sewing machine, excuse me, on a table and there's a wall, um, you may want to try a different method. Now, there is again, I, there is a method and you have to look it up on, on YouTube or something, using pool noodles. You would wrap up your quilt and then shift it along. It makes a lot of sense. Now, I've done pretty much this t top center here. Again, as you can see, smooth, smooth, smooth. And I know, because I've checked it, I've checked it and checked it and checked it, I know that my backing, again, I'll just pull it, the weight of my quilt on my table is pulling my backing straight so I don't have any tucks ever. Um, somebody had said that they do their, oh, excuse me, they do their um, best basting on a bed. Wow, that's like, I'm thinking, wouldn't you like hatch like the covers? But somebody, the, uh, um, one of my um, readers said, or um, subscribers said that they put their hand underneath, which is awesome. Um, again, they're spray basting. I have never spray basted. I don't love the, and I know it's a very popular method, more power to you guys. Um, I don't love the idea of putting a glue that much. And I know it's fine and it's water soluble and all that stuff. I don't love that. I don't love the idea of spraying. Um, I'm not great, like when I spray paint, I always get overspray. <laughs> I painted something and I, I, the overspray went on my car. <laughs> Ian's like, what the heck? I'm like, oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm not real careful. So I don't know. I, I don't want glue everywhere. So that's not a method for me. But by all means, um, you can check that out. But this is how I do it. Oh, here's my heart. <laughs> I have three hearts. We have three hearts. Yeah, it's lovely. And the, you guys who've made this sampler quilt, have you enjoyed it? Like, I mean, again, if you're just tuning in, my... Um, uh, maybe I didn't explain it maybe last week or so and as you can see I'm just working I'm just working from the inside out just spreading that right in I can feel um, if you're just tuning in and watching me for perhaps my downsizing videos and have just hung around this quilt here a sampler quilt a block every block I did a tutorial on each week or 10 days or so over to 2019, 42 weeks because of the 42 blocks, um, and then my sashing, um, it's a beginner's quilt. It really is starting with week one. Um, even if you've never really sewn or made a quilt, that was the whole purpose of my, um, my quilt um, tutorials for beginners. 
I tell you from the very from the very word go what tools to use, what how to cut if you're using scissors and or a ruler, um, where to pin. So then as we advanced, I mean the first the first block in here, I don't know where it is, is four peach a four patch. Literally four pieces of fabric sewn together. Um, the simplest of simplest of simplest blocks. But for somebody who's a beginner and you don't know, I think it's a really lovely way to learn how to, to make just a block so you're not overwhelmed. We did it for 42 weeks and then I got progressively harder. Um, this block here is called the card trick or uh, sometimes it's called the card trick. That was one of the last ones we did as more as you as the um, advanced beginners um, a couple of people said oh I had a bit of trouble with that I had a bit of trouble with it not hard not hard construction hard almost sort of visually to put together and then to construct so each week as we went on my quilt got a little bit a little bit more challenging or another technique so if you are new to quilting and want to make a fabulous quilt I chose to do it in two colors but lots of people were doing it in scraps or whatever they had around. Um, it was an awesome, awesome project. So I'm just gonna finish this up. I'm gonna finish up um, taking my, uh, pin, pinning my quilt, making sure my backing is nice and so straight. Just wanted to tell you, um, you people who have been following, my friend Jen, not my daughter, my friend, um, her sewing machine broke. <laughs> it didn't break. We, she was in such a panic. She got her machine back from Burn Sewing Gallery. Um, here, she, she, you know, she went in to pick it up, and it was X amount of dollars for the service. Um, she's like, oh, what was wrong with it? And the technician said nothing. Absolutely, it was, it was, work, it was fine. But what we, they came to the conclusion when she took it apart, you know, maybe the plate or something, maybe the, the screw or something wasn't quite seated properly. And when the technician took it apart and put it back together, it was fine. She has a Juki, um, and it was, it's a computerized machine. Um, and as, she, as we were talking about, I, I scolded Jen. She, she said, oh, so many people are like, bad Jen, because she had not cleaned her lint for, for one year. <laughs> and she had like eight quilts. So when she took off the plate, it was, she had a pillow. She was growing a pillow under her needle. And I could not stress the importance. I'm like, Jen, what are you on about? You read the manuals. You have to know that you have to clean your machine. She said, well, I read it when I got it. She said, I must have skipped that paragraph. So I said, every time you finish a project or even in the middle of a bigger project, just takes two seconds a pipe cleaner perhaps or the little brush or tiny little tweezers very carefully to pick out the lint it's a killer because we are working with all cotton fabrics for the most part um, and those fibers are a killer so anyway that's my thing i'm waffling on oh oh another thing jen and i on, on wednesday night we had the opportunity to go see celine dion ah! um her she's doing a world concert um, tours of all the cities in America. We were in Philadelphia. It was unbelievable down at the Wells Fargo Center. Um, it was a special, special evening. Um, I had gotten the tickets about, I'll tell you the little story. Um, we're not concert going party, pe um, event people going. Yeah, we've gone to concerts. I saw Andrea Bocelli and Sarah Brightman and we've seen lots of concerts, but before. Now we're a little bit old, but um, I had about a, about in May, in May of last year, 2019, May or June, something popped up on my Facebook uh, feed that Celine Dion was to be in Philadelphia, way in the future, next year, right? Fe the end of February 2020, and I, I like Celine Dion. I know one song she sings, right? I'm not, I, I don't. I'm not like into that or anything, but I like her a lot. I've seen lots of interviews. I think she's lovely. So I, I, I went online and, I, and, and those seats were sold out. Those seats were sold out. I, obviously, I went for the cheapest seats, right? Well, long story short, I didn't get the cheapest seats. I bought two tickets. And I thought, oh, oh, maybe, maybe I'll go and see Celine Dion. I don't know. <laughs> oh, 
on a whim, put it on a credit card, and then I got an email saying you can download the tickets. I don't know how to do that, whatever, whatever. But about two weeks later, I was going through my old mail. I literally forgot about it. I had a brain, I had a brain something. Um, and, and, and it was like, download the tickets. And I'm like, oh, so I did it about two weeks later. I downloaded and printed the tickets out and, <laughs> and I stuck them behind in my old other house behind the computer with this post-it note saying Celine Dion, February 26, 2020, um, stuck to my computer screen. <laughs> well, we moved, right? Right? We packed everything up. This very, very quick move, I packed everything up and I packed the tickets in a box. And we had, what, 300 boxes? And there are boxes in our shed, there are boxes in the basement, there are boxes in the attic. Well, about 10 days ago, literally, I, unpack, I, unpack, I was unpacking one of the boxes in my sewing room, and lo and behold, there are the tickets. And I'm looking, and the little post-it note which had fallen, and I'm, it was like February 16th. And I'm like, oh, has this concert come and gone? That's how... That's how uh, confused and tired I was. And I'm like, oh no, oh no, we gotta go to this stupid concert. So I quickly called up Jen, because I knew my husband, I do know that she uses a lot of strobe lights, not obnoxious strobe lights, I must say, that because I don't like them either. Not pulsing, but he doesn't do that. And, and I, I, so I said, can, you know, can Jen go? And Jen was like, oh, my daughter, I was going to take Malia, but she's in California, um, visiting family and doing a special preaching work, actually, for the Vietnamese. As you know, she speaks Vietnamese, and there's a special preaching campaign, so she wasn't going to go. So I called up Jen. I said, Jen, you want to go to Celine Dion? Jen is like, what? Who? Who are you? So anyway, we went to see Celine Dion. We had a lovely meal. Jen, Jen treated me to a lovely little Italian restaurant down in Philadelphia. We went. Um, the, it was a long night. The traffic was horrendous. Not one seat in the Wells Fargo Center was empty. Sold out. We had very good seats, actually. It was really awesome. So I'll put some pictures up at the end of, um, of, our, of our evening out. I'm like, Jen, we have a life. We're like, we're like people that go out. Because usually we're in bed by 9 o'clock. Anyway, that was my week. I'm doing this. I just wanted to check in, say hello to you. Um, Jen says we have to do some challenge. Uh, that's going to come. Don't worry about it. Maybe I'll have her in here next week. But I just wanted to say hello. And this is what I'm working on, my lovely ladder. And uh, thanks again, folks, for um, watching me and listening to me waffle on. All right. See you later. Have a lovely day. Bye.
Take it into her side.